So, how is everybody? Good. AV, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Awesome. So, um, we talked about LinkedIn stuff on Monday. Today I want to talk about your, your professional development plans and what I had in mind for those a little bit more. And then... Um, kind of end up a little bit talking about projects so we can lead into to, to settling our, our teams next week. And that'll be it. So, let me pull up Firefox here. What's that? The Tejon project. What did they want to continue? Um, they're just generally interested in seeing the project continue. Oh, okay. um, they don't have a particular. Cool. They had uh, the project manager switch, and they're just interested in picking up where it left off. Make sense? Okay. No, not information. Course documents. Okay, so as I mentioned a little bit last week when, uh, when talking about the, the overview of the class, um, it's, it's really important to me in every class that I teach here at Cal State to get a basic idea of what you do now for your job and what you'd like to be doing after you graduate because every, everything I do, I want it to support the goal of, of where you want to get to after graduation. So this is the main reason why I, I have you fill out that professional development plan because I really, really want to make sure that I'm on the same page as you as to where you're going professionally um, so that my course is supporting that. Um, related to that, um, I want to know how much money you make right now and, and how much money you're going to need to make to reach your goals in life. And more, more than anything, I want to know what your goals in life are and what your income is right now so that I can see how big the gap is between where you're at right now and where you want to get to for your dreams in life. And then I can, I can help you count and, uh, and make plans for how, you, how to get from where you are right now to where you want to get um, the, by setting midterm and, and long-range goals. Um, the end of this lecture, I'll talk a little bit more about my like, infamous rule of 10 and... Um, how important it is to have multiple irons in the fire for whatever you want to do next with your career. Um, so the professional development plan. Um, I've asked everybody to give me a baseline of what you're doing right now, and what kind of work you've done in the past. Um, in addition to that, what I was looking for in the mid-range goals was, first of all, sort of any of a number of options that relate to brainstorming for next steps in your professional life. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what those op what I think those options could and should be uh, here in a second. Um, setting some realistic income goals based on your budget. So that's why I asked what your budget is now and what you'd like to be making after graduation so that we can compare that to what I think you should be making after graduation and, and make up any gaps that, that uh, need to be made up. Um, and finally, depending on where you want to get to, make sure that you're on track with your job search and, and your networking. Um, and then for your long-term goals, I can't remember, can't remember if I asked you guys uh, in, in this class or not, but I don't think I did. How many people in here like don't quite know what you want to be when you grow up, basically? Okay, so 
a fair number. Um, what Color Is Your Parachute is a great book for figuring out what you want to be when you grow up. Um, it's a book that's been around for years, uh, but it's, it's been around for years because it's so good at, uh, at giving you an idea of what kind of career will be satisfying for you. It, it asks you a lot of different exercises about what, how do you like to consume information, um, what kind of things do you like to read, what kind of things do you like to listen to and watch, how do you like to interact with other people, um, what do you like to do in your free time. It asks you a bunch of questions just about what do you enjoy in life, and it puts those all together and gives you some suggestions of the kinds of careers that you would find fulfilling based on what it is that you enjoy in life. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that I, I filled out the exercises in this book about 25 years ago, right after I graduated from Stanford, and it said that I should be a professor. Um, I didn't pay, <laughs> I didn't listen to what the book said. I was determined that I was going to start my own business and I was going to make it big in the music business and I went a different direction for a long time, but um, of all the jobs I've had, by far and away, this job as a professor is the one that I enjoy the most. So. The book was right all along, I just didn't listen to it, and I, maybe I should have uh, 25 years ago, and I would have spent more time enjoying being a professor and less time at other jobs that I didn't enjoy as much. Um, so it's a great book for, for clarifying what, what direction you want to go in with your career. Um, in addition to that, for your long-term goals, um, I really want you to plan for the income that you need and, and to dream big to dream big and make a plan for that dream. That's why I asked, what would you, what would you, what would your life look like if you're a king for a day or queen for a day? Um, the reason I ask you that is because I want you to dream as big as possible, so I can help starting. I can start helping to to suggest some some intermediate steps that you're going to have to think about in order to get to those long range goals that you have. Um, and Depending on what your long-range goals are, um, as I illustrated to you guys with LinkedIn, I have a pretty big contact network, and I am going to encourage everyone in here, depending on what your, your future goals are, to go through my LinkedIn contacts and identify uh, at least one contact that you'd like me to introduce you to, and I will introduce you to that person to help expand your network of mentors and contacts. So. That was the reason for the professional development plan. This obviously is what it looks like. You guys have most of, most of you have filled it out. Um, what I had in mind for for jobs uh, for the uh, the the mid range goal. Um, there's a number of things that, in my opinion, are sort of the standard standard things that you could do as your next step after graduation from here. One of them is earning more money in your current job. So. Maybe you've already got a job that you really like. You don't even need to move up to a higher, um, a higher title or a different job. You just need to, to get your degree in order to be qualified to earn more money. If that's the case, great. I'm glad for you that you already have a job that you like. We can focus what you get out of this class on helping to get you more money in your current job. Um, another thing sort of related to that is moving to a new job in the same company. So. Maybe you're in some kind of entry level position right now and you really like to be in management. Perfect opportunity to do that, excuse me, is after you graduate from undergrad. So um, that's another option for, for the midterm. Uh, another option is finding a new job in the same industry. So maybe you're in the agriculture business right now and you'd like to stay in agriculture, but you don't want to keep doing entry level stuff. You'd like to do management and there's no management positions available in the company that you're in right now. So another option is to stay within agriculture, but go to a different company where you can do management instead of just entry level stuff. Um, some of you may want to switch industries. Maybe you're in ag and you want to get into oil or you're in oil and you want to get into entertainment. Um, you're in, you're, you're in medical, uh, services and you really want to get into marketing. Um, when you graduate from undergrad is a perfect opportunity to switch in industries and reinvent yourself as a new kind of industry professional. Um, grad school is also a, a valid option for, um, for what you want to do next. If you really think you want to do an MBA or uh, another type of master's or even a PhD, um, let me know. Um, I can 
help direct what we're doing in this class to, to support that goal for you too. And um, I highly recommend that you don't turn your nose up at internships, volunteer opportunities, or, or hobby projects. Um, they're a great way to get your foot in the door with, with activities or, or, or jobs or industries that are hard to get into. Um, case in point, um, my, when I did my MBA, between the first and second years of the program, um, all of us had a job for the summer of one kind or another. And I, I was very discontent that whole summer because I, I felt like I wasn't making enough money. A lot of my friends were working on Wall Street. They were making a lot of money. I was working for minimum wage at a company called Argus Direct. Um, <clears throat> and what I didn't recognize at that time, Artist Direct was a, uh, an online merchandise shop for some, some of the major bands in the, on the scene back in the, the late 90s. Um, it was also a concert booking agency for those same bands. What I didn't recognize at the time was that if I had, would, if I had been willing to work for free, I could have worked getting coffee, making copies, answering the phone for the guys that worked in the agency side of the business, which would have given me the opportunity to get to know the management and the entourage of people, bands like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, the Stones, um, Robbie Williams, uh, Korn, um, what what else? Uh, the Beastie Boys. I mean, they were major acts of the late '90s. This this concert booking agency was uh, some of the same founders that founded Lollapalooza. Um, and if I had just been willing to work for free, um, I might be on the the top hundred Hollywood power brokers list right now instead of type teaching uh, at Cal State Bakersfield, which I might not be as happy with because, like I said, the book said I should be a professor. So maybe all's well that ends well, but. Um, I really encourage you to not turn your nose up at volunteer work or, or part-time part-time hobby projects because they can really help you get your foot in the door in something that you really love to do. So um, consider those carefully alongside whatever you need to do to make money and pay the bills. Speaking of making money and paying the bills, what I had in mind by asking you what your target income is after you graduate is... Um, making sure that you have a realistic idea of what your costs are going to be after you graduate. Um, a lot of you have artificially low costs right now because you live at home, uh, you live with roommates, uh, you have student loan money coming in, um, subsidies from your government to study here in the States, depending on your, your personal situation. It's not, it's not a real income situation. And you're going to, once you graduate, you're going to be confronted with some like hard realities of the real world of, of, of making money. Um, and I want to make sure that you're, you're prepared for that. So um, I've made a, a laundry list here of the things that you should be thinking about in your budget. Uh, first of all, don't forget about taxes and withholding. Um, if, you have a, if you have a salary of $60,000 a year, um, Sounds great, but that probably means that you're taking home between $3,000 and $3,500 per month, not $5,000 per month. The rest of it goes to taxes and, uh, and benefits. So when you, when you think you've got it made and you start planning for what your expenses are going to be, don't, for, don't forget that your gross salary is not the same as your net salary. Uh, as an example, I make about $9,700. Wait, is that right? No, $8,700 a month. I make $8,700 a month right now, um, gross. But net, it's like $5,500. There's $3,000 that comes off the top uh, that I never see. So remember when you're thinking about your salary that there's going to be a big chunk that comes off the top. And don't, don't think that you're going to have that available for, for your expenses because it's, it's not going to be part of that. Um, you really should be trying to save 20% of your income for your retirement. Um, <clears throat> I did not, yes. What's that? Oh, where's the question in, uh, in AV? Can, can you speak up a little bit? I can't hear you very well.
Uh, it does not include 403B. It does include Social Security. The 403B would be under the 20% savings that I just talked about. So um, whatever you put towards the 403B uh, and other, other things like 401K and uh, um, there's a third one that I can't remember. Um, what's that? ESA? TSA. Uh, yes, so anything that goes towards those is part of that 20% savings that I was talking about. Um, you really want to make sure that you're saving about 20% for your long-term um, long care, for, for, for paying for your life when you get old, basically. Um, I did not save very well earlier in my life and I'm very lucky that I actually got to Cal State and got the pension program that I do here because otherwise I'd be really screwed for my old age. You gotta you gotta start early in, in saving. My dad, for example, who I'm taking care of right now when as he's getting older, uh, did not plan well for his old age and all all of those costs, all of those uh, burdens fall on me now. So first and foremost uh, I, I would highly recommend to all of you that you talk to your parents about long-term care insurance. Um, it's a great deal, um, and it really, really covers really covers things well when you do get to the point where you can't work anymore and you can't take care of yourself. You have to live in assisted living or senior living of some kind. Um, I'll talk about this again a little bit later when I, I, I talk about uh, long-term financial planning, but um good decent senior living costs between three and four k could even be up as, as much as five k per month um so to to really have decent uh setting i mean for what what you get for two thousand a month or 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 less is basically a dorm room that you share with a stranger in a dingy uh, in a dingy, dark, kind of dirty uh, uh, senior living facility, it's it's quite depressing what you get for two. And two that's that's two thousand a month. New generation might be fine with that. What's that? <laughs> New generation might be okay with that. What a dorm room with a dingy stranger. Uh, I I I imagine Martin that by the time you get to be sixty five or seventy five, you're you're not going to want to live with a dorm room a stranger as a roommate anymore. <laughs> Um, it's uh, I don't know what's that can I imagine that a new generation is going to be comfortable spending their old age with strangers well anything's possible man anything's possible but uh, if for me, at least, I don't want to. I don't want to spend the age from age like seventy to ninety living with some stranger in a dorm room. So, if you don't want that to happen, um, get long-term care insurance and start saving for your future. Um, long-term, especially for you guys at your age, long-term care insurance is really cheap. Yes, question in AV. Sorry. Uh huh. Yeah, I I understand, man. I I I'm I get fed up with my dad on a right. I got my dad in an apartment around the corner from me, and if he actually lived with me, I I I, I think I'd strangle him. <laughs> and that's that's my dad. That's not a stranger, you know. So uh, uh, it's. Uh, I don't know. Maybe in some ways it'd be easier with a stranger, but uh, um, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, I think most of us, by the time we get to that age, want a place to our, our ourselves. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, but that's for all kinds of different people, not just old people, right? Yeah, it's 
at, at 30 or 25, I would have been, I, I would have found it an adventure to live in a, in a storage unit. Um, but, but not at 70. Um, actually, as long as I had the unit to myself, I'd probably, I, I probably would be okay with that at 70, but I don't want to share it with a stranger. Anyway, to, to not get too hung up on this, point is that uh, you want to save for your old age, and, and, and that's a combination of, of the right insurance policies and, um, and putting money to the side with uh, things like 401k, 403b. So try and, uh, try and plan on 20% there. Um, in addition to that, uh, rainy day funds are important. So um, you never know when you might lose your job. You never know when you might um, get sick or get injured and, and, and be out of work long term. Um, or metaphorically, as I like to say, you never know when your rebel, your rebel cruiser is going to be overtaken by an Imperial Star Destroyer and you have to jettison the, the, the droids and the plans in an escape pod. Um, you always, you always want to have an escape pod ready or you're going to end up like doing really doing things that you don't, don't want and, and losing five to ten years of your life in, in, in dead-end jobs just to be able to pay the bills. Um, if you really want to have smooth transition in your career from one position to the next, in a world of uncertainty like we live in right now, you want to have some money put away to the side in, that's liquid that you can get to. That 20% savings is long term. It's not designed to be taken out until you're 65 or 70. Um, rainy day funds are things that you put in a savings account, things that you put in a money market account, um, or in a CD that, uh, that you can get to easily in case you lose your job or something. And, and I would, I, it's, it's an ambitious number, but I would actually recommend that you, you try to save up between one, month, one year and 18 months worth of your monthly costs. So whatever your monthly, monthly spending rate is, calculate 12 to 18 times that, and that should be your goal to have in, in short-term savings. So if, if you got that, honestly, if you have 18 months worth of burn rate and savings, you could walk away from your job tomorrow, start your own business, and be up and running, making a profit, and supporting yourself within 18 months. If you don't have 18 months, months of burn rate, you're not going to be able to pay your bills long enough to be able to start the business. So um, another good thing to plan on and think about. Um, in addition to those things, some of the more common things that I want to make sure that you've planned for in your, your budget after graduation are health care, rent and utilities, car payment, telecom, food, entertainment, and question mark. So some of you in here have families. Um, others of you have, uh, um, you know, hobby, hobbies that you really enjoy pursuing, um, uh, goals, goals that you have short term for your life after graduation, um, whatever, whatever it is besides the, the standard, um, I want to make sure that you're planning for that in your, your budget as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that question mark area uh, in the next couple of slides, though. Um, I, for, I don't think I've asked in this class yet, how many people in here are familiar with RunnerLink? Okay, like maybe maybe a little less than half. Um, RunnerLink is our internal Cal State um, job board for uh, positions that are being hired for through our career center. Um, it also serves a couple other purposes, but for the purposes of this class, RunnerLink is our internal recruiting board for, for jobs at Cal State. So it looks like the following. Looks kind of like this. I just want to point out two things to you. This is, this is exactly what the screen will look like for you when you log into RunnerLink. Um, first of all, the employer directory. If you click on employer directory here, and if you just click on, if you don't select anything for industry or state and you just click on search, 
it'll actually bring back a list of every employer that we have in our, our Career Center database. Um, I would recommend that you, you browse through these listings of, uh, of companies that we have contacts with, Daniel Phillips, Edward Jones, Farmers Insurance, etc. If any of these are, are, are companies that you'd be interested in working with, um, you can ask our Career Center for the contact information for their HR department. Um, get your foot in the door there. So first of all, employer directory, search, that'll give you a list of all of the employers that we have contact information for here at, directly at Cal State. And then secondly, uh, if you go to the job search tab, and again, you just click search without selecting any search criteria, it'll bring up every job that we currently have available at our career center. And you, you may be surprised you may be surprised at some of the stuff that's, uh, that's available. Um, so I highly recommend, in addition to whatever other job searching you're doing, that you browse through the resources that we have on RunnerLink, because those are the highest probability, highest probability jobs uh, that you're going to find are the ones that are being actively recruited for here on this campus. So in addition to RunnerLink, um, Social media, like I showed yesterday, like I showed on Monday with uh, with with uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a great place to find job listings at particular companies. Um, Monster and other public listings, like Indeed, um, are are also great for for finding job openings. When it comes to Monster and uh, Indeed, for that matter, when it comes to applying for stuff through uh, that's listed on LinkedIn. You want to make sure that you find a contact at that company, and uh, after you've filled out all the the, the the application information and you've submitted it, you want to make sure to contact someone at the company who's uh, who's you who you have some kind of, uh, of 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 entree with, and just make sure to tell them, hey, look, I applied for this job. Could you make sure to talk to the HR people and make sure that my my information doesn't get lost a lot of times when you apply for mass mass listings um, there's so many applications that a lot of them just get lost in the shuffle and, and they never get reviewed so always good to combine your uh, your job posting submissions with uh, follow up with a contact name of some kind or another um, so basically for for any of these top three you want to make sure to identify network building talk targets and prospe prospect for networking leads. Uh, what color is your parachute? I've listed a link here um, that you can go to. This is the 2016 version of the book. You can also go back and get earlier versions. They're not that different from year to year. Uh, if you just click on this link, it'll uh, bring that up in Amazon. Um, you can probably get it for five to ten bucks on Amazon. I, I'd highly recommend that book for anybody that uh, doesn't quite know yet what they want to do with their life. A um, couple of examples for for planning big or dreaming big with your uh, with your your income. Um, one thing that that has been important to me for a long time. This is. Baker, Bakersfield is the 13th city that I've ever lived in in my life. Um, I've lived on the East Coast. I've lived in the Midwest. I've lived out here on the West Coast. I've lived in Germany. I've lived in Brazil. Um, so I have friends and family all over the world that I miss and that I want to go visit. And something that's been important to me for a long time is having enough, having enough of a travel and entertainment budget to be able to actually do that. Um, and so I sat down a long time ago and really thought, okay, how much is the plane ticket? How much is the, is the rental car? How much are the hotel costs? How many times am I going to want to go out to a restaurant? How many times am I going to want to go out to a bar? How many times am I going to need to pay for an excursion to this place or that place? Am I going to have to pay for flights within the country once I'm there, um, regional kind of flights? I just sat down and I added up everything that would be necessary for all of the various friends that I want to go visit. And it came up to about $30,000 per year. So um, obviously that's not something that I could do between today and tomorrow. 
Um, I think I'm at about 15 right now in my budget that I'm spending on, on travel and entertainment. Uh, so I'm about at about half of where I want to be. And the, the, the remainder of that money needs to come from, uh, from consulting and entrepreneurial work that I do outside of, uh, of, of this job. So that'll be the same case for most of you. Once you've, once you've sort of maxed out with your salary and I make, I make about 110 right now, um, that'll go up to 150 or, or a little bit more than that by the time I get tenure. But that's, that's it. That's all, that's all the more money I can make as a professor. Anything else that I make has to come from entrepreneurial stuff that I do on the side. And most of the rest of you will find that in most normal careers, you're going to max out on your salary between 100 and 200,000. And anything that you want to achieve above that has to be entrepreneurial, has to be a small business of some kind, um, has to be uh, investments that you make with your, uh, your, 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 um, with your savings. Um, it's, it's not going to come from your salary anymore, but if you want to achieve your dreams in life, you, you certainly can if you're, you're entrepreneurial and you, you start, start activities or businesses on the side in addition to whatever it is that your, your main job is. Um, a couple of examples of, of standard, standard things that a lot of people want to plan on. I just want to point out what, what you're going to need to, to reach those goals. Uh, buying a house is one thing that a lot of people uh, want to do. Some of you in here have already achieved that, and, and my, my kudos to you. For those of you who do not own your own house yet, um, average housing prices in Bakersfield are around $200,000. Um, you are probably going to need about a 20% down payment. So 20% of $200,000 is about $40,000. So in order, to buy, in order to buy your own house, all things by being equal, you need 40,000 bucks of cash as in a, in a chunk in order to be able to put down and buy the house. Um, which sounds like a lot, but if you just save uh, 1,000 bucks a month for four years, um, that's 40,000. If you save 500 bucks a month for eight years, you've got, you've got uh, $40,000. Um, depending on what your time horizon is for buying a house, it's pretty easy to save the money that you need and within five to 10 years, be, be in a position where you're, you're able to buy a house. Um, taking care of your parents in their old age, like I talked about before, um, elder care is between three and 4,000 bucks a month. Um, so first of all, I highly recommend, um, highly recommend long-term care insurance. Long-term care insurance for me right now runs about 180 bucks a month. So that's, 1800 call it a little over 2000 bucks a year that I have to save in effect by spending it on my long-term care insurance. Um, if, if anything happens to me, I have more or less 10 years worth of, of, of like assisted living that I would have with my own, own place that I don't have to share with someone else if it comes to that. Um, so, Saving two thousand bucks a month is a lot easier than saving. Um, let's see, if by the time your parents are in their seventies and eighties, if we assume that many of your parents are around my age right now, so they've got thirty years to go, and you need ten years worth of of, of funds to be able to take care of them once they they can't take care of themselves anymore. Um, 10 years times 10 years times $40,000 a year is $400,000. So you're going to need to save up $400,000 over the next 30 years, which um, is more or less saving a little over $10,000 a year. So um, that's that's more expensive than saving two thousand dollars a year, but uh, it's still not as expensive as being a millionaire, which is a goal that a lot of people sort of list as a dream in life is to be a millionaire. If you save twenty to thirty thousand dollars and invest it well for twenty to thirty years, uh, you'll be a millionaire. 
Um, now, that sounds like a lot of money, but if you put it in your budget and figure out the highest salary you can possibly get and then start figuring out entrepreneurial work you can do on the side, you can reach those goals without having to have your own business full time. Um, it's tough, but it's possible. Um, the last goal that I have listed in here as an example for you guys is owning a Learjet. Um, it is not possible to own a Learjet unless you uh, own your own company full time. Uh, anybody in here want to take a guess at what a what a like Gulfstream Learjet costs? Three point four million. Nope, higher. Higher. The price, the, the price I've seen is $60 million. Um, If you want to rent space on a jet, did you know you can do that? It's like a timeshare, just like a timeshare for an apartment. You can have a timeshare on a jet. Um, how much do you think that is? Uh, for one-sixteenth of the jet. So you're going to share that jet with 16 other people over the course of a year. Huh? No, it's not that bad. It's about 500000 to like join the club, and then you got to pay about 125 a year to maintain your, 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 your share of the jet. So yeah, it's, it's a lot. Um, basically, that's uh, if you spread the $500,000 over um, 20 years, that's, uh, what is that going to be? $500,000 divided by 20. About 4000 bucks a year for 20 years? No. 40? Huh? Anyway, um, let's just figure 25 k per year plus 125. So you're going to need $150,000 a year um, for however long you want. Like, if you're going to be using that jet for at least 10 years, then you're going to need 150,000 bucks a year just to maintain your 1 16th share of the jet. Um, now, if you're really lucky and you find you manage to get like a CEO job in a Fortune 500 company, um, you could theoretically have a 200, 300, 500,000 dollar a year salary and still achieve your other goals in life and have enough money left over to have a timeshare on a jet, but most of us, if we don't, if we don't get to be the CEO of a, of a Fortune 500 company, um, are going to cap out on our salary between 100 and 200,000. And there's no way that you can do a part-time business that's going to make you, um, well, you might, if you're really lucky, be able to do a part-time business that makes you $150,000 a year. But Probably more often than not, if you want to be bringing in six figures in your side job, it can't be a side job anymore. It's got to be your full time, full time business. So, pretty much, if you want to own a jet, plan on uh, starting your own business and being successful with it because it's the only way that you're going to have enough money for a jet. Yes. What is what is your uh, what do you say about covered edge? Should we have one always on hand? Um. Yeah, it's good to have a generic cover letter. Uh, it makes it easier when you're sending stuff out to people to just edit that thing quick. But uh, each cover letter, each cover letter is a little bit different depending on what you're applying for and, and who you're talking to. So it's a good idea to have a generic one available just because it makes makes things easier. But you still have to tailor it each time. Um, so that's my that's my spiel about uh, long term dreams and 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 finances for for where you want to get in life um, I'm gonna skip by this slide on general networking and go to the specific points I wanted to make for you guys about networking um, there's about seven billion people on the planet um, no matter no matter what it is that you want to do in life what it is that you have to offer as a professional what kind of mentor you're looking for there's somebody out there who can help you. The problem is just finding them. What's that? How do you find them? Well, you you start by recognizing, like I said, that like I say in point number two, 
but you're probably gonna have to you're probably gonna have to talk to ten strangers for every one new friend that you make, and you're probably gonna have to find ten friends before one of them turns out to be a decent business partner. So that pretty much means a hundred hundred new people in order to find one new business mentor. And you can multiply you can do the math to multiply how many mentors you're gonna need for one of them to be able to uh, to, to to hook you up with a major deal of one kind or another. So one, the first thing, Brittany, is uh, is just numbers. The second thing is uh, to take advantage of, of of all the information that you can on on publicly available media, like social social media, like the the company website, like databases that we have uh, through our our uh, our our library here. Um, uh, you, you you know questions like how much money does your 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 company make per year or what are the main products that you sell what are the prices that you sell them for um, how many employees work for your company you don't really ever have to ask somebody that information when you finally get a chance to talk to them because that kind of information you can find in publicly available sources so once you do finally talk to new people um, make sure that you're using your time wisely to ask questions that you can't otherwise find the answer to. Um, document everything. There's no piece of information that's too small. Um, as a, an example of that, um, one, my, my second company that I started was called Market Driver and we, we did networking for, on, on behalf of other clients. So I had a client back in Indiana who wanted to wanted to get uh, get in with one of the major PR firms in Indiana. It was called Borshoff Johnson. So I looked around. I found a phone number for Eric Johnson, one of the principals of the company. I called, talked to the attendant. I said, I'm looking for Eric Johnson. She said, he's on vacation. I can send you to his voicemail. I said, okay, sure, that's fine. And um, the voicemail said, hey, this is Eric Johnson. I'm on vacation until next Tuesday, the 23rd. Um, if you uh, if you leave me a voicemail, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye bye. Um, so I left a message. Hey Eric, this is Jeremy Woods. I run this company that does networking on behalf of other people. Um, I've got a client that's really interested in talking to your firm. Please, you know, whenever you get a chance, uh, let me know when be a good time to talk. Um, and I made a note to myself after that. Okay, Eric's on vacation. Don't call again until after the twenty third. And you know, probably. Uh, if he's getting back on Tuesday the 23rd, then it's going to take it's going to take a couple days for him to get caught up on everything. So I should probably wait until uh, the first of the next month before I call him. Um, so I made a note about that, and I waited, and I called back, and um, I, I, I caught him finally at the beginning of the next month. And first thing I asked him was, you know, how was your? Hopefully, you got my voicemail. How was your vacation? Um, and he said, oh, you know, it was nice. I, I haven't really had a chance to listen to your voicemail. I've been really busy. Um, but thanks, thanks for asking about the vacation. I, I wish I were still there. Uh, it, it helped to start out a conversation between the two of us. And he ended up becoming a really good contact for me. And he usually guest lectures in my classes now about once a year. And that, that all started because I wrote down the vacation schedule of a stranger. So whatever the information is, no information is too small to keep track of. And then finally, don't take rejection personally. It's just part of the process. Anytime you're trying to achieve your dreams, trying to achieve something new in life that doesn't currently exist, the world is going to reject you. Uh, it's going to be like it's going to be like baseball. Whenever every time you're trying to hit a, a, a base hit or a home run, you're going to strike out more times than you actually hit the ball, and that's just the nature of the game. Don't. Don't get down on yourself because you you swung the bat and missed. Just keep in mind and remember that uh, that you're going to have to persevere, and that uh, eventually things eventually things will work out if you do if you do things over and over again, like I like I've laid out for you here. Um, that's that's pretty much the lecture. the The last thing I wanted to do before we call it a day is talk about the projects again a little bit. Um, and talk about your uh, your uh, um, professional development plans. 
Um, so if I remember correctly, I took a picture of took a picture of what the potential projects were last week, and I've still got it here. Let me pull it up again. Okay, so I cannot see myself. Hang on. Aha. That'll work. There. So, from what we talked about last time, there were two projects that we mentioned in Antelope Valley. Uh, Jesse's Pizza. and the Prison Braille Network. Um, AV, um, how many people, how many people off the top of your head right now are, are interested in the Jesse's Pizza Project? I don't see any hands. What's that? I can't. Hang on. Let me turn up the volume a little bit. Say again. One more time. Sorry. Seven people for Jesse's Pizza. Seven? Yep. Wow. Okay. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people in that room right now. None, none of those ten are, are part of these seven? No. Part of them are. Raise your hand if you're part of the seven. Okay, so I see two, three hands. Four. Uh, how many people are interested in the Prison Braille Network project? Is that I just see one right now. Okay. Um, I think there's like 16 people in uh, in AV, so that should mean that we still have um, eight that uh, that don't have a project yet. Um, any other ideas about what you're interested in doing, folks that have not raised your hand? Yeah, I have a friend of mine who owns a cell phone shop in the mall out here. Okay. He has, and he has a shop in Ventura Mall, the Glendale Galleria, and the uh, uh, Northridge Mall also. Okay. Um, who is that that's talking right now? Robert. Donnelly? Yes, sir. Got it. Um, okay, Robert, anybody else that's uh, that is, have you talked about anybody else uh, about that project? Yeah, there's yeah. three of us. David Lane and Brad Pilgrim. Uh, sorry, David Lane? Yes. And Brad Pilgrim. Okay, and Brad Pilgrim. Yes. Um, who else does not have a project yet, or does not have a, 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 a preference for a project yet in AV? Well, we're thinking about one. Okay, what are you thinking about? What's that? Kurds? Like the, the country of Kurdistan? No, like the gym. Like Kurds. Oh, Curves. C U R V E S. Yeah. Okay. We're thinking, we're thinking about that. Uh, there's four of us. Yep. Um, but I'm gonna, I have a couple of other ideas. I'd like to have lots of my groups before we make a decision. 
or something else. Okay, who who is part of that group? Uh, Veronica Rodriguez. Veronica Rodriguez, okay. Brittany Romer. Brittany Romer, okay. And Ryan Barton. Uh, yeah, Brittany Romer, Brittany Howell, Ryan Parton, Veronica Rodriguez, right? Yes. Yes. Got it. Who are the seven people who are interested in Jesse's Pizza? What's that? I don't think they're all here. Who? Well, can you tell me the people that are there? Who is interested? Nicholas Brayton. Okay. Irena Kwachi. Hang on. Who? Irena Kwachi. Kwachi. Irena Kwachi? Yeah. Okay. BB Khan, so can you. BB Khan? Yes. Okay, anybody else that's there right now? Lindsay Hines. Lindsay Hines. Got it, Lindsay Hines. Carolina. What? What's that? Carolina. Carolina? Yes. Sorry, what's the last name? U-L-L-O-A. Ah, U-L-L-O-A. Got it. How do you pronounce that? Joa. Joa? Joa. Joa. Okay, cool. Oh, Joa. Oh, Joa. Got it. Uh, okay, uh, AV, that uh, that gives me a pretty good idea to get started for next week. Um, do you have any other questions? I'm going to talk with the Bakersfield people a little bit before I call it a day, but um, I can actually go ahead and disconnect from you guys if you don't have any more questions. AV, you, you're okay? Okay, cool. Then I will see you guys next week. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect right now. Wait, okay, what's up? When you're done, Professor, come to you with a class all week. You can disconnect all week. No problem. Uh, do, you have, do you have a question for me? After you're done, Professor, go right ahead. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you guys then so that I can talk to this class, and I'll, 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 I'll bring the volume back up again once I'm done, okay? Thank you, yes. Okay. So, um, for Bakersfield, uh, we had uh, La Cavagna. Restaurant. Fast Trip, Gas Station Marketing, and um, Sam's Uncle's Construction Company, basically. Huh? We can probably pull that one. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So that's only two projects that uh, that we got to talk about right now. So we got to talk about some more projects in here. Um, who in here is interested in working on that? Uh, La, Vanya, La, La Cabana Restaurant Project. So tell me your names. Eric. Huh? Uh, Eric. Uh, Eric what? Garcia. Okay. Who else? Okay. Huh? Gang Lee? Yep. I remember from last quarter or last semester. Yes. Huh? How do you spell that again? Huh? N U M A. Newman. Uh, what's your last name? Huh? N A I F. Got it. Um, anybody else that's interested in that restaurant project right now? Okay. Oh, I see more hands. Hang on. Tell me. 
Okay, you you as well? Jesse Tuma, got it. Okay, what about the, the fast trip? Um, I haven't had a chance to ask, but I think we're going to need to go ahead and pull that one. Okay. But I was um, wondering, um, I know Emma is in your other class. Yep. And she's doing the Lakash gas station app again. Yep. Uh, would it be okay for us to do that one too or no? Uh, I think so. Let's let's say tentatively yes, okay? So this is basically a, 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 a mobile app that helps you to find gas stations when you're you're returning a rental car. Um, so that's Jessica and Jasmine, right? Um, anybody else that uh, thinks that sounds interesting? What's your name? Uh, Hugo. Hugo, what's your last name again? Uh, Vinales, V-I-N-A-L-E-S. Got it. Anybody else that thinks that sounds interesting right now? We can always change things around later. It's okay. I just want to get a basic idea right now. Okay, so that's that. How about, so? oh, so we got the Tejon Ranch project too. Yeah. So Tejon Ranch uh, it, Conservancy is basically a, a wildlife preserve who's looking to do a mobile app to better share all the features of their wildlife preserve with customers. So um, uh, let's see here. Tejon Ranch. Brittany. Who else? Uh, hang on one second. What's your name? Madeline Johnson. Okay. Inez Ramos. Uh, hang on one second. Inez Ramos. Who else? Tell me your names. Ismael Castro. Huh? Ismael Castro. Ismael Castro. Who else? Abid. Abid? Yeah. Abid, what's your last name? Alanazi. A-L-A-N-A-L-A-N-A-Z-I. Z I? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Sam, you're interested in that one, Sam? Okay. No, Black Hurst, right? Yeah. I know. I saw another hand. Ahmed. A L J. O H A N I. Is that right? Okay. Um, other venture ideas. What? Oh yeah, the 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 the, uh, the edible garden. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's let me put that one down. Who's interested in that? Are you still running that? What's that? Are you still running that mostly? No, not really. No. I mean, <laughs> well, I never was running it. I was just the cheerleader for it. Um, no, no, no. I was the I was the cheerleader for it, but I'm not running it, and that's one of the reasons why I backed off the project a little bit because it's not moving along as fast as I want it to. But, huh? Yeah, do your spiel. Um. Okay, well, basically, we've got two acres of land. Two um, acres. Yep. Man. Two acres of land. It's 1.75, but it's almost two acres of land over by the track and field stadium um, that's set aside for, um, it's set aside for doing uh, uh, an edible garden. So we're going to grow, um, going to go grow citrus trees. We're going to grow root crops. We're going to grow um, uh, potatoes and other kind of tubers. Uh, we'll grow nut trees, perhaps, eventually. We'll grow um, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, we'll probably have a, a kitchen where you can take uh, cooking classes or, or, or prepare your own food. Um, we will have um, 
we'll have like uh, events there where eventually you can host weddings or, or like corporate retreats. And uh, we're going to be building the whole thing over the coming year or two. So um, there's a lot of, yeah, Sam? So what's lagging on it? What's, what's lagging? If we, yeah, if we were to go with that, that's, that's one I remember too. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's lagging is... Um, Why'd you bail? Huh? No, 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 it's not the Kit Foxes. <laughs> the, reason, the reason I have not been as big on that lately is uh, basically... Um, we keep planning and planning and planning. So um, at some point, at some point, we just have to say, okay, we're going to have like five orange trees and four like almond trees. And we're going to have two rows of cabbage and three rows of carrots. And we're going to build a pagoda here and something else here. And go. Um, nobody is deciding go. And I don't have the authority to do that. We have a couple people here at the university and then we have the donors outside the university and everybody just keeps thinking, oh, well, let's do another list of all the things we could do. Let's do another list of all the things we could do. Um, and they're not doing something. So there's still a lot that we could do on the project. But the reason that I haven't had it as, as highly ranked is because the, the thing we need to do now is go get the damn bulldozers and start like clearing the land. Well, Cal State owns the land. The donors, I mean, the, way that, okay, yeah. the donors are bringing the money to the table to, to build all the things that we need to build. But yes, it's basically been in place for a year now, and it's it's stalled. But um, any time now, we might be able to move forward. So that's that's kind of the state of affairs with that project. Um, do you guys want to tell me your names again of, of potential interest? Sam, you might be interested, right? Yeah, that's fine. What's that? Say again. Abid. Ismail, were you raising your hand too? Yes, sir. Okay. And what's your name? Dasman. Yes. What's your last name? Sony. Say again. S. S O L I S. S O L I S. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me let me check with the the project planners and see if we've gotten any further along, um, and we'll go from there. Other project ideas. Um, I was gonna, go ahead, Stefan. Um, for the Braille, the prison Braille project, I was actually does it work, and whose idea is it? Um. I don't, it's, it's somebody from uh, AV, um, from Antelope Valley. I can't remember right now, but let me, let me tentatively put. Um, Wasn't it something about like, uh, they help when they get out of prison? Oh yeah, I, I, exactly, Ismail. Um, it's, it's basically training people, yeah. training inmates to, to be able to do instruction in Braille so that when they get out, they can teach uh, various people about Braille. No, because I think I don't think there'll be an issue because I think that guy actually already works inside the prison. Uh huh. down for now, Martin, like uh, help at-risk youth. And uh, we'll go from there. I saw other hands about projects. Yes? Well, I have a small business customer. I know that uh, they board horses and they train people to ride horses. Uh-huh. It's uh, The business is uh, high voltage. It's called high voltage? Okay. So I know that uh, when I was speaking to her, she said something that they're li or she's lacking is the uh, Advertising ability, she doesn't really know how to do it. She can't afford it, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, 
Sounds cool. What's your name? Raymond. Raymond what? McCaslin, M-C-C-A-S-L-I-N. I got it, M-C-C-A-S-L-I-N, right? Yes, sir. Um, anybody else right now that thinks that sounds interesting? Okay, cool. Tell me your names. Ahmed what? A L J O O. Oh, you just you were part. You were interested in the other ones. Yeah, I remember now. Sorry. Okay, who else? Yes. Jose Martinez. Jose Martinez. Okay. Um, hang on. Uh, oh, wait. There we go. Um, okay, say, I'm sorry, say, tell me your name again. Mohammed Al A L S H A I D A N Al Shaban? Right. Okay. And your name? Miguel Torres. I got it. Miguel Torres. Yeah. Uh other names for that project right now? Okay. That gives me a pretty good idea to start with. Um if uh, if there's no more questions, let's uh, let's call it a call it a a, a day, and uh, I'll see you guys next Monday. A V, can you still hear me? Okay, hang on one second, okay. Uh, what did you need? Uh, ha hang on one second. Um, let me let me wait until this room clears out because there's a bunch of like shuffling around. I can't hear you very well. Okay, give me about a minute and a half. Just want to add this to the one in the morning class. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, where is my? Here we go. I got one here. Okay. The last one because I'm gonna clear the screen. Thank there you, you go, no problem. Yes. Can you add it to the garden? Yeah, sure. What's your name? Uh, Nadia. Uh, that garden would be cool. Nadia. Mir Kasimi, M I R. Say again. Mir Kasimi, M I R. A A Z E M I. E M I? Yes. Okay, Thank you. no problem. Um, Bakersfield folks, if you. Do not need to talk to me. Can you talk out in the hallway so I can actually hear what the... Uh... I've overnamed the, the horse one. Yep. She's not here. Uh, Anna, Anna Prado. What's her last name? Prado. P-R-A-D-A? -A? Uh, D-O. Prado. Got yeah. it. Okay. James, how are you? Good. Cool. Okay. Bakersfield, folks. Cool. I'll see you next week. Now... Uh, AV, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, what's up? Um, we just wanted some clarity on the project. Okay. Um, so this project is, I guess I don't understand what the parameters of. What are you looking for? Well, what I'm looking for is a couple different things. If you look at the last page of the syllabus, it, yeah. uh, it's got a, a rubric in there of what I want. So basically... I'm going to have you make a website for, for the, 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 the company, one kind or another. Um, you're going to do some customer outreach and talk to potential customers. Um, you may put together a, uh, a marketing plan associated with that if, uh, if the company needs it. Otherwise, at least you're going to be talking to potential customers. You're going to be talking to an expert advice contact of one kind or another to get advice about the business. Um, you're going to do an industry analysis. You're going to put together a uh, uh, financial projections, and you're going to put together a um, uh, an investor outreach uh, plan. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. So for that curves group, we're actually going to change it. 
Okay. That's cool. Nail salon. I'll just put nail salon for now, okay? Okay, and then when I get the official name of it, um, I'll give it to you. But so pretty much, I guess what my group would do is um, like see if we can, you know, create the website for her. Uh, you know, start her kind of her customer outreach by getting her known in Rosemont and, and things like that. And, exactly. Okay. Okay. So we'll do that. Did that, did that make sense? Okay, other questions or, or comments from AB? Is that it? Now, Professor BB, so I just joined the class. Yes, BB Khan, right? Yes, BB Khan. Hi, BB. Okay. On Blackboard, sorry. So I was looking for information that I might have missed or maybe assignment assignment I may have to turn in. Uh, I wanted to ask you about it. Uh, BB, do you have my email address? Yes, I do. Can you email me? Can you email me and remind me that you need a copy of the syllabus and a copy of uh, of the professional development plan, and I'll send them to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to forward that email to you, BB. Oh, okay. So if you just send me an email with your email address, I'll forward you the the information you need. Okay. Okay. Send email to you. And. So my my it's it's J Woods and the number seven. J W O O D S seven at CSUB dot edu. Okay. You send us that email with the link to the recording. Uh, yes, I can also send that to you, BB. That, that's the only thing that you're missing right now, and the rest of the class, I have recordings of each class session, and I'll forward you a link so you can, re you can, you can watch the recordings of the other classes. Okay, and then you said something about LinkedIn? LinkedIn, yes. Um, that is in the class recording from Monday, and I also uh, will send you information about what you need to do to create a profile, okay? Yes, did you do that already or not? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. So, I don't know if you got it or not. Uh, probably. I, I went in and I clicked yes to a whole lot of connection requests uh, oh, okay. yesterday. I can't remember if I saw your name or not. Oh, okay. Okay, and then... So, on the lectures you say you post, did you? Uh, yeah, the, the, the lectures I have recordings, and as soon as you send me that email, I can forward you the information on how to watch the recordings, okay? Okay, and that's what I have. Okay, cool. Well, welcome to the class. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Anything else from AV? That's it. That's it. Okay, cool. Have a good rest of the week. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. No problem.